Uh, we shall continue with the study of interacting system a little bit more and uh, in this connection we shall do perturbation theory. Uh, this would involve a perturbation expansion of the partition function and uh, then you know what to do with the partition function. So, we will apply it to a particular problem uh, and uh, uh, sort of to in order to you know establish the utility of these uh, perturbation theory which you may be aware of uh, from uh, quantum mechanics. So, it is in the same spirit that we do here. Okay. So, uh, the basic thing is that uh, that you have a Hamiltonian which is like a H0 plus a H prime. Uh, you know the solution of H0. So, H0 is known and solvable basically. So, it is solvable and uh, it is say eigenstates uh, are given by psi 0 and the eigen energies are given by E0 and that is known but uh, we do not know how to solve for uh, total H and uh, it is also true uh, that uh, H uh, prime is uh, much much greater than H 0 and when you talk about these angular brackets uh, they actually mean the uh, expectation value with respect to the states uh, that of H 0. So, we still calculate uh, this uh, expectation value of H prime uh, within the eigenstates of H 0 thinking that the uh, this H prime which is the perturbation term does not take the system too far away from its uh, eigenstates of H 0. Okay. So, this is what we do and another uh, very important thing is the following that um, uh, this uh, H uh, 0 and H prime they do not commute. Okay, which means that uh, they do not have same set of eigenfunctions one. Secondly, uh, it is also true that you uh, cannot change the order of operations of H 0 and H prime. So, you have to respect that order, the order in which it comes. Okay. So, uh, the objective of any perturbation theory is that uh, that you write this uh, write down the Hamiltonian as H 0 which is known as I said and expand uh, these H prime in terms of these uh, you know lambda h 2 prime and so on uh, and all that where lambda denotes the uh, uh, smallness parameter and it is usually taken as to be much smaller than equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, this is the preconditions or these the given conditions for this problem of doing statistical perturbation theory. And uh, as I said that uh, the ultimate goal is to calculate the partition function. Uh, which uh, would include the effect of some kind of an interaction which uh, um, sort of prohibits us to write down the partition function in a closed form and we will use a perturbation theory for that. Okay. So, uh, we introduce an operator let us say this is u of beta and this is equal to exponential beta h 0 uh, exponential uh, minus beta uh, H 0 plus lambda H 1 prime and so on and uh, so this is the definition that we say. Uh, so, the definition of um, this operator which is convolution uh, excuse me convolution of this uh, matrix and this matrix which is given by this and then we will uh, calculate the correction um, in terms of uh, this u of beta or this u of beta will play as an important uh, quantity in this regard. Okay. And uh, because uh, of this second condition which says that h 0 and h uh, prime do not commute. So, we have this uh, exponential of beta h 0 plus lambda h 1 prime. Uh, this cannot be written as exponential minus beta h 0 uh, into exponential minus uh, lambda beta h 1 prime because it would include um, a commutation of this h 1 uh, and h 1 prime and h 0 which uh, so uh, this cannot be written or this is not an equality. Okay. So, which uh, says that uh, u of beta really is not equal to uh, exponential minus beta lambda h 1 prime. This is just to make sure that uh, we know that this uh, 
uh, u of beta is really the form that is written over here in equation 1 and it cannot be simplified uh, in the form of exponential minus beta lambda h 1 prime. Okay. So, this uh, u of beta will uh, sort of serve as an important quantity for our analysis. Now, it is of course, true that u of uh, beta uh, equal to 0. So, for beta equal to 0, let us call it u of 0, this is equal to 1, which means that when the interaction terms are absent, uh, then uh, we can call it uh, u of 0 equal to 1, which also can be called as u 0 of beta, that is, is a 0th order um, of this u matrix or this u operator. And this basically will uh, take us to the non-interacting problem. And as I said that uh, this uh, problem is solvable, the non-interacting problem is solvable which means that we already know the solution of this problem. So, which problem uh, that we are dealing with uh, that of course, would be decided on the context. Okay. So, uh, what is uh, d u d beta? Let us try to calculate this with the definition of um, 1 that you see here uh, and let us call this as equation 2 as well. So, d u d beta is uh, of course, there are as you see that there are 2 terms there. So, you have to keep one of them to be constant and uh, take a derivative with respect to beta for the other one and do the same by keeping the other one constant and take it uh, with respect to the first term. Okay. So, if you do that, um, this can be written as exponential beta h 0, h 0 minus h 0 plus lambda h 1 prime uh, and exponential minus beta uh, h 0 plus lambda h 1 prime. So, there are 2 terms and these 2 terms can be written as this. You can further simplify this and write this as minus lambda uh, and uh, exponential of beta h 0 and h 1 prime exponential minus beta of h 0 and then this u of beta. Okay. So, this d u beta d beta. So, uh, we might miss this dependency on beta, but u writing u means u is a function of beta. Okay. So, this is equation 3. Okay. So, this is uh, basically you can call it the equation of motion for u uh, of course, with respect to beta and this has a solution. Uh, we can write down the solution as u beta equal to u 0 uh, minus lambda 0 to beta uh, d beta 1, where d be, uh, beta 1 is a dummy index of beta, uh, because we are integrating over beta and the, uh, the integral is over 0 to beta. So, we introduce uh, another beta, uh, which is uh, beta 1. So, this is exponential beta 1 h 0 and h 1 prime and uh, exponential minus beta uh, h beta 1 h 0 and u of beta 1. Okay. So, that is the solution of this problem and let us call this as equation 4. Uh, so, up to first order in lambda that is doing a first order perturbation theory. Uh, so, this is up to first order in lambda and of course, recognizing that u of 0 is equal to 1, u of beta becomes equal to 1 minus lambda and 0 to beta d beta 1 exponential beta 1 h 0 h 1 prime exponential minus beta 1 h 0, where u of beta 1 is taken as 1. And uh, so, this is a equation um, solution for u of beta up to first order in lambda as you see that it is lambda, uh, it is a linear in lambda um, and uh, the first term is uh, independent of lambda which does not take into account any interaction. So, it is uh, only uh, related to the non-interacting problem which is what we have said earlier. So, uh, now if you proceed uh, in this form one can write down at the uh, same some rth level of iteration this is equal to 1 minus lambda and 0 to beta uh, d beta 1 exponential beta 1 h 0 h 1 prime exponential minus beta 1 
H 0 and you have a R minus 1 and a beta. So, that is say equation 6. So, you see the uh, iteration uh, at the rth level this is a basically this equation um, 4 for example is an iterative equation it involves um, the u beta on both sides of the equation and uh, uh, that too uh, on the right hand side it is inside the integral. So, you have to uh, take a value for u of beta 1 uh, and then solve for u of beta put it back as u of beta 1 and then again solve till you reach a self consistency. And uh, so, uh, at the rth level you it would involve a term which is u r minus 1 beta and uh, that of course, would be uh, each of these u uh, r minus 1 beta would have a structure which is same as uh, that of 4 ok equation 4 all right. So, um, if you keep terms up to order lambda square then we can write down uh, u of beta as uh, this is instructive and uh, one should do it uh, by himself or herself. So, that uh, you know that uh, these expansion is really correct. So, it is exponential beta 1 h 0 h 1 prime exponential minus beta 1 h 0 and uh, then again we will have a 1 minus lambda and then a 0 to beta 1. Uh, then there is uh, another dummy variable which is d beta 2 exponential beta 2 h 0 h 1. So, there is a prime here h 1 prime uh, exponential minus beta 2 h 0 and so on. Okay. So, you see that this is up to order lambda square because there is a lambda here uh, and there is another lambda that is here. Okay. So, this is of the order of lambda square which means it is of the order of h 1 prime square. So, it is a second order uh, term uh, that is going to give and of course, we uh, miss out terms which are of the order of lambda cube and so on these are not taken into account. Okay. So, um, if you write this down uh, like open the bracket the, the second bracket that you see inside the integral it will become a 1 minus lambda and a 0 to beta uh, d beta 1 uh, 0 to beta 1 uh, d beta 2 exponential beta 1 h 0 and uh, then it is exponential uh, beta 2 uh, minus beta 1 and uh, one has uh, this is h 0 and then there is a h 1 prime and then there is a exponential minus beta 2 h 0 and so on. So, uh, here of course, uh, we will use this um, cyclic property of traces which will indicate uh, there. Uh, now, we will uh, go ahead and uh, with this u of beta, we will calculate the partition function and that you know is one of the main quantities, key quantities in statistical mechanics. So, it is partition function that is going to be calculated. So, that is defined as z is equal to trace of exponential minus beta h and now this h contains uh, h 0 and h 1 prime and h 1 prime uh, h 2 prime and so on so forth. So, we take this as exponential minus beta h 0 and u of beta okay. and u of beta now contains all these effects of the interaction term that you see there. So, uh, let us call this as equation 7 and this as equation 8. Okay. So, uh, what we can do is that notationally we can um, express the partition function as z 0 plus a lambda z 1 plus a lambda square z 2 and so on. Okay. Uh, these are uh, the correction terms to z 0 which is the non interacting partition function uh, which we have been dealing with in many of the cases such as harmonic oscillators, uh, ideal gas or uh, uh, spins in a magnetic field and so on. Okay. So, uh, z 0 is of course, a quantity which is what we have said uh, this can be written as a trace of exponential minus beta h 0 
and uh, where u uh, of uh, 0 or uh, u 0 beta is equal to 1. So, that is the uh, non interacting partition function that we are quite familiar with. Okay. So, uh, let me now proceed to calculate uh, the first correction in the partition function and uh, we could actually stop at that, but the uh, uh, application that uh, one has chosen here uh, would uh, necessitate uh, calculation of the second uh, order correction as well. So, we will calculate both z1 and z2. z1 is simpler, z2 is little more complicated, but then one has to do it because uh, this would give you a correction to the non interacting problem. So, z1, okay. not all problems z1 is equal to 0, but in some uh, cases it is equal to 0, which is what we will show. So, this is uh, d beta 1 uh, trace of uh, exponential uh, minus beta plus beta uh, 1 h 0 h 1 prime exponential minus beta 1 h 0 that is the first order correction in the partition function let us call it as equation 10. Okay. Now, uh, use the property of the stress. So, this is one matrix, this is another matrix and this is another matrix and we can use a trace of A, B, C. We can do a cyclic uh, permutation of this um, matrices which means that it is a trace of uh, you know C, A, B and equal to trace of uh, say for example, B, C, A and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, this is called a cyclic property of the trace uh, where A, B, C is our matrices just like uh, the one that I have shown here with an under brace. Okay. So, uh, we uh, get this last factor of exponential minus uh, beta 1 h 0 that you see here and we bring it to the front just like the C is brought to the front and so on. So, that would uh, uh, give a form which is 0 to beta and a d beta 1 uh, trace of um, uh, exponential minus beta 1 h 0 and uh, exponential minus uh, beta h 0 and I simply write it because uh, I just open this thing and this is equal to beta 1 h 0 and so on. And of course, uh, b exponential minus beta h 0 and exponential plus beta 1 h 0, they commute. So, this can be brought here and they would sort of you know um, annihilate each other right, uh, it will make an identity matrix and the beta 1 dependence will be going away. So, this is what I meant and this will make it uh, look like z 1 is equal to minus 0 to beta. Uh, there is a d beta 1 trace of uh, exponential minus beta h 0 h 1 prime and you see that uh, you are doing an integral over beta 1. So, z 1 will not contain any uh, beta or rather beta 1. So, this is equal to minus beta z 0 uh, h 1 prime and I will put a 0 and this means that uh, expectation value of h prime h 1 prime uh, with respect to the states of uh, h 0. Okay. So, this is calculation of the expectation value of this uh, with respect to uh, this 0 that is the uh, the states of eigenstates of h 0. So, z 1 the first order correction comes out as minus beta times the z 0 which is uh, known uh, the non interacting partition function multiplied by this expectation value. So, there these beta and h 1 prime are the renormalizing factor uh, which comes in front of z 0 that would uh, you know renormalize the uh, z 0 with respect to. So, your total z at this level is z 0 plus z 1 where z 1 is given by this and uh, this z 1 comes because of the interaction and you see explicitly that the interaction term is present here. Okay. As I said that uh, you could probably stop here in some problem and do not uh, wish to continue any farther. 
but for the sake of completeness and the, uh, for the sake of you know doing a particular problem that we have uh, chosen we need to go to z2 and z2 is a little more uh, involved to calculate okay so let me show the uh, calculation of z2 So, Z2 is written as uh, 0 to beta d beta 1, 0 to beta 1 d beta 2, another dummy index comes in for uh, beta. So, trace of uh, beta is of course 1 over kt. So, uh, exponential of beta 1 minus beta uh, h 0 and h 1 prime exponential beta 2 minus beta 1 uh, h 0 and h 1 prime uh, exponential minus beta 2 h 0 and that is the uh, trace that you have to calculate. Okay? And um, one can write this as, um, so this is 0 to beta and uh, so d beta 1 and you can write it as 0 to beta 1 and a d beta prime that is another index that we have uh, introduced and this is trace of exponential minus beta minus beta prime h 0 and h 1 prime exponential minus beta of h 0 and h 1 prime. Okay. Uh, where again we have used the cyclic property of the tress and what is beta prime? Beta prime is nothing but this uh, beta 1 minus beta 2. Okay. So, this is uh, we are uh, going ahead with the calculation. Let me see the, uh, so this is um, say for example equation 11 and let us put it as equation 12 and uh, we are doing a simplification or uh, getting z2 in a tractable form which would uh, be uh, you know when we use the property of the tress then we will have to calculate. So, this tress is nothing but uh, as you see here the tress of these two matrices and this is nothing but the uh, when you take a tress you actually take the sum over the diagonal elements. Okay? So, this is basically the diagonal elements that have been taken and uh, so this is uh, beta prime is equal to beta 1 minus beta 2. So, z 2 can be written as a 0 to beta and a d beta prime you can uh, change the uh, this write this down as um, d beta prime 0 to beta and 0 to beta prime minus beta and d beta 1 trace of exponential minus beta prime just mathematical uh, some simplification has been achieved. So, it is exponential minus beta h 0 prime h 1 prime exponential minus beta minus beta prime h 0 and h 1 prime. You see all the while we have uh, a term which is uh, quadratic in h 1 prime and that gives you the second order correction. Okay. So, uh, one can now integrate over beta 1. Uh, and use uh, cyclicity, cyclic property basically and uh, use cyclic property of the tress okay. and what one gets is uh, a z 2 that is equal to 0 to beta and a d beta prime and beta minus beta prime trace of uh, exponential minus beta minus beta prime uh, h 0 h 1 prime exponential minus beta prime h 0 h 1 prime and the trace of that. Okay. So, uh, if you use uh, beta double prime to be another dummy variable for beta minus beta prime then z 2 can be written as uh, 0 to beta d beta double prime beta double prime trace of uh, exponential uh, minus uh, beta minus beta double prime h 0 h 1 prime 
exponential minus beta double prime h 0 h 1 prime. If you uh, follow all the steps, uh, this should not be a problem. So, where we have used this cyclic property of the trace and all that and um, so this is the form for z2, we will have to of course uh, get it in the form that uh, is like the expectation values with respect to the, uh, the states of h0. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, let us number this as uh, we have uh, 11 and uh, maybe this is 12 already marked there and maybe we call this as equation 13. Okay. So, um, and now you see that uh, you have a beta double prime, but this beta double prime has no special significance. Uh, we can simply write it as beta prime. Anyway, it is a dummy index and uh, so we will just, uh, so we will uh, remove all the beta double primes and write them as beta. So, this is uh, there was this beta prime and then there is a beta minus beta prime. Um, and there is a beta prime and so on. Okay. So, that is your um, that is your uh, z2, uh, let us call this uh, as equation 13 anyway, we have changed from beta double prime to beta. So, um, so this uh, will give us z2 is equal to um, half of uh, uh, beta z0. So, what you, uh, the way you get this half factor is that if you take this beta prime equation and the beta double prime equation which we have removed now, there is no beta double prime. If you take the sum of these two and add them up, this will give you a factor of half and this is beta z0 and we have a 0 to beta and a d beta prime and now we are uh, this we are replacing the trace by this expectation value which is exponential beta prime h naught h 1 prime exponential minus beta h naught beta prime h naught and h uh, 1 prime and 0. So, uh, we have uh, an integral and uh, over this d beta prime and then we have to calculate this expectation value with respect to the states of h 0. Okay. So, let us calculate this. Okay, and let us call this as equation 14. So, let us calculate the expectation value term which is um, exponential uh, beta prime h 0 h 1 prime exponential, uh, let us hope that I have written it correct, yes I did. So, it is exponential beta h 0 prime h 1 prime and exponential minus beta prime h 0 and again a h 1 prime and uh, then it is a 0. So, now uh, we recall that uh, we know this problem completely and uh, this uh, h 0 psi a consider two states because we are going to talk about second order correction. So, there will be terms which are diagonal and the terms which are um, off diagonal. The first order correction only involves the diagonal terms, there is no off diagonal terms and that is uh, precisely the reason that we had to go to the second order because uh, we may also have off diagonal terms uh, which comes in the second order correction uh, for the z or uh, we uh, can talk about also um, the free energy which is uh, related to or which is given by log of z within a factor of minus 1 over beta. So, this is equal to, so we can write it as E0 uh, and we take two states psi 0 a b. So, this is equal to a E0 a b psi of a b. Okay. I think I can make it clear, basically it is a h 0 psi of a equal to E0 a psi of a and h 0 psi of b is equal to E0 b psi of b and then we have, we know all these things and we also know these uh, states okay? and then we have to calculate these within them. And these states are of course, um, orthogonal. Um, so, this is equal to delta a b. Okay. All right. So, uh, we are now uh, equipped to calculate this. So, let us do this that exponential beta prime h 0 h 1 prime um, uh, exponential minus beta prime h 0 h 1 prime 
and uh, 0 is equal to 1 over uh, z 0. Let me write it here um, 1 over z 0 trace of. Uh, so, this is really a given information. So, trace of uh, exponential minus beta minus beta prime uh, h 0 uh, h 1 prime exponential minus beta uh, prime h 0 h 1 prime and so this is uh, one has to calculate this and this is equal to 1 over z 0 and there is a sum over a and b and then we have a term which is psi a uh, exponential minus beta minus beta prime h 0 psi a. Psi a and psi b are two um, eigenstates, two orthogonal eigenstates of h 0 uh, and a psi a and uh, then there is a h 1 prime and then there is a psi b and um, this is multiplied by a psi b. Uh, and exponential minus beta prime h 0 uh, and a psi beta a psi b sorry um, and psi b h 1 prime um, a psi of a. Okay. And uh, so, this is uh, the form and then uh, let us call this as equation 15 that will give us this second order correction to the partition function that you see here. Okay. So, um, if you simplify this more, uh, this becomes equal to um, 1 over z 0, uh, this sum over these two states a and b exponential beta prime minus beta E a uh, exponential minus beta prime E b and uh, we have this psi uh, a um, h 1 prime psi b uh, this mod square. Okay. So, now um, we can have two options one is that uh, we can have a e uh, a equal to e b that is uh, we can have these uh, two states to be identical uh, then the uh, integrand is independent of of beta prime. Okay. And um, for the other case, uh, we have uh, this E a not equal to E b and they are truly orthogonal. So, they are not identical, they are orthogonal. So, we have to consider both of them separately. Okay. And uh, this uh, can be done. So, we write this as 0 to beta and we have a d beta prime and then exponential I am writing it once again. Uh, it is h 1 prime exponential minus beta prime h 0 uh, and h 1 prime and this 0 is equal to 1 over z 0. First, the diagonal term which is beta and sum over a, a or b they are same. So, it is exponential minus beta E a uh, 0 and uh, a psi uh, a h 1 prime and a psi a mod square and uh, we also have another term which is coming because of E a or the states a and b to be non-identical they are rather orthogonal this is uh, sum over a b and we have exponential minus beta e b 0 uh, minus exponential minus beta e a uh, to be 0 and uh, uh, so e a 0 minus e b uh, b 0 and because this denominator would be finite and would not blow up because your the states a and b have different energies and uh, once again just to repeat that these states a and b are the two uh, different eigenstates they could be same or two different eigenstates of h0 the first one correspond to 
um, them to be equal a and b to be equal and the second term corresponds to them to be not equal. So, this is equal to a psi um, a psi a um, h 1 prime and a psi b uh, mod square and so on. Okay. So, uh, thus the free energy let us call this as equation uh, 16. So, we calculate uh, log of z or basically which is nothing but the free energy um, up to minus 1 over beta or minus k t as you know. Uh, so, it is a log of z is equal to log of z 0 that is the non interacting term which we have calculated in various situations. We have a beta h 1 prime 0 that is the first order correction which is what we have said and uh, of course, there was a lambda we are just taking out that lambda now uh, that we are calculating various corrections uh, with uh, respect to um, I mean the compared to the non interacting problem. Uh, and then there is a half of um, beta square uh, 1 over z 0 and uh, we have a sum over a uh, exponential minus beta e a 0 and uh, psi of a um, h 1 prime psi of a mod square um, and uh, the unequal term that is when a is not equal to b it is exponential minus beta e b 0 uh, minus exponential minus beta e a 0 and um, uh, divided by beta e uh, a 0 minus e uh, b uh, 0 and so on. So, uh, and then of course, this psi a. Um, so, psi of a h 1 prime psi of b and the mod square of that. So, that is the uh, there is a first order correction and these two are the second order correction. So, that is the interacting problem has now uh, doing a perturbation theory we have obtained corrections up to first and second order. Okay. And uh, uh, so, uh, let us apply it to a given problem and try to see that how one actually calculates the first and the second order corrections that is how this h 1 prime uh, with respect to expectation value of h 1 prime with respect to uh, the ground state uh, wave functions are calculated which are uh, which are needed for both these things. So, uh, the first term uh, needs the diagonal elements uh, and the second term has two uh, or rather second order correction has two terms which uh, need both the uh, diagonal and the off diagonal elements. So, keeping this in mind we go on to an application And this is say um, spins, spin half particles in a external field. And uh, we really do not consider any interaction here, but we will still have an h 1 prime or h prime um, say external field B in the z direction. Uh, okay, so, it is uh, predominantly in the z direction, but now in order to introduce uh, a perturbation we take a special case of B uh, to be majorly having in the z cap direction and there is a small component in the x cap direction. So, the assumption is that uh, it is uh, the field is predominantly in in uh, z direction with a small component in x direction. So, this is the uh, 
perturbation that we are talking about. So, uh, really we are not uh, uh, doing an interacting problem, but this would act like an interaction term. But you can always say that uh, you can rotate your axis such that uh, that direction which is uh, predominantly in z and a little bit in the x direction. So, it is like tilted in this direction and we can always uh, define our z axis to be pointing along this direction which is slightly tilted. So, it really does not matter, but uh, we are uh, for demonstrating the method that we have learnt, uh, we are using this uh, term as a perturbation. So, the Hamiltonian is given by minus mu b and uh, i equal to 1 to n that is n particles. So, um, n particles that is understandable and uh, s i uh, dot with dotted with b and um, so, here of course, you can say that uh, b uh, x is much much smaller than b 0. Okay? So, it is uh, this is what the condition that we have said the assumption that we have written it down. Okay? So, you have a h which is predominantly in the z cap direction. So, it is not uh, h is not a vector, but we are just showing that this is predominantly in the z cap direction and there is a small perturbation part which we are now calling it h prime and not h 1 prime say h prime which is in the x cap direction. So, this is small. Okay? Uh, so, the h prime uh, this allows us to write to be written as so uh, mu b b x and then there is a s i x okay? and uh, what is the form for h 0 that is very simple. So, it is a mu b and a b 0 and then we have a s i z okay? i from 1 to n okay? i from 1 to n as well. So, these are the two um, terms in the Hamiltonian and your total Hamiltonian is h 0 plus h prime and uh, we cannot solve this Hamiltonian exactly. Uh, the reason being that um, uh, that we are uh, either going to do you know in the basis of uh, uh, s z that is the, uh, the z component of the spin or we are going to solve the problem in s x basis of s x, but of course, here it is going to be in the basis of s z because that is the dominant term and because s z and uh, s x do not commute, it is clear that h 0 and h 1 do not commute as well, okay? because uh, s uh, since you know uh, s z s x is not equal to 0. All right. So, uh, just to remind you that uh, this uh, non-interacting partition function is very easy to calculate. Uh, that has so s equal to half is just two values which are uh, exponential uh, this beta mu b. So, this z 0. So, this is equal to exponential beta mu b b 0 plus exponential minus beta mu b b 0 and so on and this is nothing but 2 cosine hyperbolic. Uh, uh, there is uh, a half factor that comes in because uh, the Hamiltonian the s is equal to half. So, there is a half here. So, it is 2 cos hyperbolic beta mu b b 0 by 2. All right. So, uh, this is the z 0 which is what we know and easy to see that the first order correction is 0 um, and the reason that it is 0 is uh, the following and that is 0 because you have h 1 prime within 0 this is equal to 0 because uh, your s z has uh, 2 um, which are up these are the eigenstates up and down. So, s z acting on um, up will give you a half up and uh, sz acting on down gives you a minus half down uh, with of course, we have taken h cross equal to 1 um, and uh, these uh, up and down spins are definitely not the uh, eigenstates of s x. So, that is equal to 0 and because the first order correction equal to 0. So, z 1 is identically equal to 0 because z 1 is proportional to this h 1 prime 
uh, expectation value of that with respect to this 0 or the ground state or uh, the, uh, the states of H0. So, we have to go to the second order there is no uh, option uh, and even in second order you have to remember that uh, the diagonal terms are still 0. We are talking about these terms uh, basically the third term that you see inside the square bracket and so that is an important thing that third uh, one or the first one inside the square bracket is the one that is um, uh, 0 and we are only left with uh, one term in the second order which is uh, off diagonal term. Okay. So, uh, that is not too difficult to calculate. So, uh, we calculate this log of z which is equal to uh, log of z0, z0 is already known, we have written that down and uh, we have uh, the correction that is coming as 1 by 2 z0 beta mu b square uh, b x square. Okay. So, that is the field in the uh, x direction. So, a and b, uh, so these have exponential minus beta e b uh, 0 minus exponential minus beta e a 0 and divided by uh, e a 0 minus e b 0 and so on. And we know what these are um, and we have this psi a and we have this s x and a psi b and so on. Okay. So, now you see that this uh, may have a term that is non-zero. So, we usually define these. Um, so, s plus is equal to s x plus i s y and s minus is equal to s x minus i s y. If you add both of them, then you have these cancelling and we have a s plus plus s minus divided by 2 and this is equal to s x. Now, if s x acts on these up, it will have a term uh, and then it has. So, s s x will be like s plus plus s minus um, that divided by half and then it is acting on up s plus acting on up will give you 0, but s minus acting on up will give you a down and uh, that down will now have a, a sort of. So, we have taken psi b to be um, up and psi a to be down and then we can have an I, I mean uh, value there and um, we sort of uh, leave this uh, uh, calculation of the matrix elements to you. They are simple because uh, you can use this um, the raising and the lowering operators and take this psi a and psi b. So, your psi a and psi b are up and down psi b is equal to down and um, not only that we also have. Uh, so, let me write this down here. So, psi uh, a this is equal to up that is for the non interacting problem and psi b that is equal to down for uh, this non interacting problem and this e, e um, a and 0 this is equal to minus mu b um, b 0 by 2 uh, and uh, e b uh, 0 is equal to mu b b 0 by 2 and so on. So, you know all the states, now you know all these uh, things, uh, all these um, um, the states that need to be operated upon and then you have to operate uh, this up say that is uh, the first uh, term. Uh, I mean that is the term that you see here, the second term in the correction. So, that is the second term, the first term is of course known because z0 is 2 uh, cosine hyperbolic beta mu b b0 by 2 and now you have um, all these things need to be that need to be calculated and this uh, uh, this matrix elements they need to be calculated and one gets a correction. Uh, so, once you do that one gets a correction that is uh, proportional to b x square uh, the term linear in b x is equal to 0 here and uh, so that is the correction to the uh, non-interacting partition function or non-interacting free energy that you get 
because of this Bx. If Bx is really, really small, then of course, even the second order correction vanishes, but uh, symmetry wise, there is no uh, problem for it to exist. If uh, Bx is say even 10 percent uh, of that of B0, it, this would still exist and I uh, wish that you calculate this, uh, the entire thing uh, and uh, convince yourself that this uh, can be calculated. I have given you all the quantities which are exponential minus beta uh, EB0. Um, which is nothing but exponential uh, beta mu b b0 minus divided by 2 sorry uh, exponential minus beta mu b b0 by 2 and that is uh, nothing but uh, the sine hyperbolic uh, term and then E a minus E0 that will give you a 2. Uh, twice of this mu b b0 by 2. So, that is mu b b0 and then uh, whatever comes from this, uh, uh, this expectation value of this psi 0 which can be obtained as I said that if you have a s plus plus a i. So, this is, uh, so sx is equal to s plus plus s minus by 2. So, this is uh, s plus uh, plus s minus and then there is a half and then you operate it on this. So, s minus operating on this will be equal to 0, uh, but s plus operating on this will make it up and then up and up will have a, a term between them. Uh, then you go and do it. This basically uh, sum over a and b. So, you have to take uh, you know uh, this is uh, there is a sum over a and b and then this has to be calculated. I am sorry I have missed this. This is actually a mod square of that that needs to be calculated. So, that will give you the second order correction. So, this is the utility of uh, perturbation theory uh, in statistical mechanics where uh, an interaction pro or interaction term can be dealt with uh, by uh, doing an expansion of the partition function or doing an expansion of the free energy and calculate the corrections to the free energy. I think this method is clear. Of course, many of you may be uh, quite well familiar with the perturbation theory in uh, quantum mechanics. It is in that same spirit, but uh, we are uh, sort of applying it to problems which uh, are statistical mechanics problems that is say um, these spins in a magnetic field, many spins in a magnetic field or even uh, for an interaction term, if you can treat it as a perturbation, you can calculate the uh, corrections to the ground state energy or rather uh, what we say is the partition function or the free energy um, compared to uh, when the interaction is absent. So, these corrections are important and you can actually calculate corrections up to any order. In fact, uh, you do not have to stop at second order, you can do it at any order. But of course, as you saw that the calculation gets more and more complicated as you go higher um, in order. And if your perturbation term is truly weak, then of course, you do not need to go to uh, a whole lot of terms. Here we had to go to the second order because the first order gave you uh, 0 correction. So, this uh, uh, one more you know technique to um, handle interacting systems. We of course, have not put in any interaction, but have shown it through uh, explicit uh, consideration of a perturbation term in the non-interacting problem and calculated the correction to the ground state energy up to second order. Okay. So, I will uh, stop here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.